Good afternoon. Uh, sorry for the technical difficulties. This is part two of uh, the interview with uh, Mr. David Bonagirio, fantastic uh, artist um, and drawer, figure painter, uh, and uh, artist of many talents. So I apologize for the cut off from the last uh, conversation. Uh, we were at uh, your grad school work. If we could uh, pick up from there, that would be fantastic. We're, we're at what part? Uh, from your grad school work, where you show the two hands. The two hands going down, though, right? Right. Yes. Two hands going down. All right. I will go back to that. Let me get you screen shared again. Okay. Yeah. Did I explain them yet? Uh, yes. Okay. You, you uh, I heard so much that uh, you have seen. What? Go ahead. Just go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, moving on. Um, there it goes. Okay. Um, so, I had read a book by um, a computer programmer named Stephen Grand. Uh, the book is called uh, Creation, Life, and How to Make It. It was a, a book about artificial intelligence. Um, and it was the second half of it was just loaded with computer jargon. And I couldn't really understand most of it. But um, the, the first half was just this really beautiful and kind of poetic um, explanation about uh, how, how matter works and how it, how it, how it exists and how it interacts with other forms of matter. And it was, it was extremely interesting and I completely recommend it. But um, one of the, uh, one of the, uh, um, actually I might have it written down in one of these notebooks, but uh, one of the most influential passages to me was, uh, well, I don't have it in front of me, but I can just kind of paraphrase it. Oh wait, no, here it is. Okay. Uh, think of an experience from your childhood, something that you can remember clearly, something that you can see, feel, maybe even smell as though you were really there. After all, you were really there at that time, weren't you? How else would you remember it? But here's the bombshell. You weren't there. Not a single atom, not a single atom that is in your body today was there when that event took place. Every bit of you has been replaced many times over, which is why you eat, of course. You're not even the same shape as you were then. The point is that you are like a cloud, something that persists over a long periods while simultaneously being in flux. Matter flows from place to place and momentarily comes together to be you. So whatever you are, therefore, you're not the stuff of which you are made of. So that doesn't make the hair on the back of your neck stand up. Read it again until it does, because it is important. So. It really got me thinking about uh, about boundaries. Um, it got me thinking about uh, consciousness and uh, and just and and the self. Like, how, how can you um, have a singular consciousness and a and a uh, singular sense of self? How can and retain memories for longer than you retain any actual physical matter? Like so, so I, I I decided that the the, the cloud metaphor extremely powerful uh, uh, device that I needed to be using. Um, so I started doing these drawings with um, again powdered graphite on panel of uh, uh, just different cloud formations and um, interacting with figures. Um, they got a little. Kind, they, they started to just feel kind of cluttered, and people started thinking of them more as uh, these um, uh, just kind of confusing illustrations, really. And um, so they, they they were they were interesting technical ex exercises. Like again, these are kind of small, but uh, started going into a lot. I, I really just kind of got wrapped up in doing the clouds. Like I spent way too much time doing the clouds. And I started to edit them down more and more. And the more I edited, edited, edited them down, the, the more I felt like they were kind of in line with what I was trying to get at. 
So eventually, this again, this this drawing is maybe five inches tall. Um, so these these drawings, they got some, they got uh, more and more minimalistic. But uh, minimalistic is the wrong word. But it just got they just got more and more simplified. Um, so eventually, I was just doing drawings of clouds. Um, and th this is what my thesis work was about from my uh, my master's degree. I had um, a series of drawings. I don't know how far I can zoom in on this. And these, these just took these each took months to do. Like it was kind of ridiculous how long I spent on these drawings. But um, uh, the clouds really kind of um, became the, the perfect symbol for uh, uh, impermanence, uh, lack of boundaries, uh, lack of um, um, basically lack lack of everything that we feel is solid or that we perceive as solid. This piece is, uh, I think, 32 inches by 26 or something like that. Uh, this this piece is 40 uh, 48 inches, so it's four feet wide by 42 inches tall. Um, and this this piece is called uh, Life and Death. Uh, this is actually the uh, the top of a volcanic plume. So it was um, a volcanic eruption that had come up, and uh, again, I just thought that was a really good uh, a good uh, a good metaphor for for the cycle of life and death because the plume rises up, it has gained some level of organization, and it contain it has a form for for a while for its life. And the form changes; it's constantly changing and growing, and then eventually it just disperses and flattens back out and releases all its material back to kind of the ether of, of matter. And uh, this piece uh, is called uh, Devil, and it's six feet tall by. Uh, 42, no, no, six, six, six feet tall by 48 inches wide, so four by six feet. And um, I was just thinking about, uh, uh, I was actually thinking about like sand devils, those uh, small uh, dirt tornadoes that you probably see plenty of in Oklahoma. Um, because they, uh, I don't know, I, I think they're really interesting. They're uh, like, you know, the, miniature version of a tornado, but they uh, kind of pop up out of nowhere. You don't really see them coming. And I thought that that was just kind of, a, again, a, another good uh, metaphor for life because, you know, things happen so so quickly, things change, and you get swept up. Right. And um, so now this this is the break. This is what I, this is like one of the first pieces I did after grad school. And it, is a little bit different. It's different material, and again, I was just experimenting. I actually took a piece of uh, a stick of white conjic crown and ground it up into powder, and then um, uh, laid that down on a on a black panel and started working into that. Mm -hmm. um, if you hadn't noticed, I've been working pretty much just reductively for the past couple of years. And reductive drawing is, basically just means erasing. Um, I, I have, had to start thinking about like why it was that I was doing that. Um, God. Oh, if I can find it. Okay, here we go. Um, so most of my work. Lately, it's been done in some form of reduction, reductive drawing, reductive painting, uh, relying he just whatever it is, it's relying heavily on reduction. Um, mm -hmm. I view my work as a as an excavation. I'm I'm digging these things out, and in and in doing this reductive process, it, it really feels like I'm kind of carving the image out of a uh, carving the image out of a plane, and. Um, 
so that that in, initial blank slate is kind of the, uh, the the just a conceptual surface, and then I get to kind of carve the image out of that. And uh, but the reason I kind of included this one is because it, it ended up being a almost a sketch for the next piece that I have here. This um, next piece uh, was again it was based off of this, and it was a again a a, a boundary piece. Um, the uh, this this piece was entitled Dust because it it seemed I wanted it to to feel like you just kind of like drug your hand across the surface and kind of pulled up up an image, and um, it's of these this this photograph that was from like the 1920s of these uh, uh, Native Americans doing a. Um, uh, uh, skinwalker dance, and the skinwalkers are, are, are shapeshifters in, in uh, I think it's Navajo uh, uh, tradition. And they, um, and again, like I, I've always kind of found um, <laughs> uh, shapeshifters is something to be like a very interesting concept because again, it goes along with that kind of, uh, it goes along with that lack, the lack of boundaries. And uh, this piece was again just a uh, Kind of a revisit of that. Mm -hmm. um, this piece was uh, called Buckle. It's about three feet across, and it. I was just thinking about um, again as one one of the ways that, that that author that I was talking about before describes matter. He just describes it as a kind of persistent waves in a field, uh, and. So I was just kind of imagining a, a field, and then there's a, a, a point where it buckles and it becomes something. And then, um, this is the last slide that I have. This is the last uh, finished piece that I've done. Um, it's uh, called Roll. Um, I was actually driving and taking pictures with my cell phone. Don't do that. It's dangerous and illegal. But uh, I saw this uh, storm that was kind of rolling in. And I had to I snapped a couple of photos of it and started using that as a, a reference material for a couple for a series of drawings. Um, again, it just this this I think that the most visually interesting thing about clouds is that they're so large and they're moving so slowly that they they seem very solid. Like just looking up at clouds, you, you kind of just in your head you think of them as solid. And really, but there's just this beautiful sense of fluidity. Like it almost looks like you're under the water, looking up at a wave that's rolling over the top of you. And um, well, so, I'm I'm really hoping to kind of continue this series in a in a in a way that it can be pushed even further. Like I I talked about how I was going to uh, uh, take the technique from these. Uh, Drawing slash paintings where I was act literally carving out the surface and trying to combine them with um, graphite drawings um, uh, again, just to, to kind of like do, doing that. I think will even kind of confuse the, the the perception of the of what it is that I'm actually doing with the surface and confuse the uh, the line of where drawing and painting kind of where that boundary lies. Um, so I, I'm really trying to push or trying to uh, question boundaries on every front that I can, and I don't know. We'll just see where that goes. This 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 drawing and then the last, the previous uh, nine are in a show in North Carolina right now. So if you're in um, just out, if you're in Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, go to the uh, Carabas Arts Council in Concord, North Carolina, and you can see my work there. Great. Congratulations, David. Thank you, and um, that's the last slide I have, so if anybody has any questions, please feel free. So do you have any interest in ever going back to uh, your um, initial interest in advertising and things like that, or is that something that's behind you now? Uh, it's, it's pretty far behind me. Like, I haven't even thought about that since I was an undergrad. So, uh, I mean, the, the closest thing that I can get to, uh, or the closest thing that I come back to as far as design goes is probably illustration, mm -hmm. um, because you know you're you're working for a client and you're uh, 
you're working with somebody else's vision, you know, and just trying to make it or trying to, to fill their need. So uh, I don't know. I, I, I won't. I, I'd, I'd like in a perfect world, I'd like to be 100% selfish and just worry about my own needs. But um, nice to get paid. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, so where would you uh, uh, define the boundary be between drawing and illustration? Then is it is it the, uh, how you define the client or the purpose of the art or where does the where does drawing and illustration begin? I suppose is my question. Well, I, I really think that uh, the the line is definitely not a, a clear cut thing. Like a lot of my favorite painters are are have roots in illustration, like uh, uh, Phil Hale um, uh, and and just a bunch of others. Um, so it's it's. I don't know. I, th I think it's about a way of presenting an idea, and it's also about who you're doing it for. Like I, I think it is, as long as you're doing it for yourself, it can be fine art. But it uh, and it, something might be more illustrative, like might be more illustrative. But it's I really think it's it's the intent. Mm -hmm. Uh, so what is going on with the piece behind you? Is that something that you're working on now, or could you also oh, start? That's that's just it's one of those uh, carved in pieces. Oh, okay. Yeah, I had that in my slides, so you can see how how the size they are. So. Yeah, they're pretty big. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Any questions to think of? Well, I'm curious. What what kind of illustrations are you doing right now, or the jobs that you take? Um, like I said, the last the last one I did, I just finished a couple of days ago was a uh, uh, just a tattoo design. Um, I had uh, past couple of months I've just been getting ready for the show that I just put up so um, uh, I hadn't really been doing anything but prior to that I was just um, uh, doing like little uh, uh, what are essentially like logo designs, but uh, I don't even know what they're called. They're just like little like clip art type things, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the more fun stuff is when you, know, you get to actually do larger drawings. But yeah, I, I don't have any kind of consistent work doing that though. So, about how many hours a week do you would you say you put in towards your studio time? Uh, it, it varies, especially right now. While I'm just um, like since the show has been over, or since the show has been up, which has been up for almost a month now, I uh, have just been sitting at my computer filling out applications for uh, teaching positions, and so I haven't had a whole lot of time in the studio. But I, I just got a couple of projects out of the way, so now I'm starting to work back in the studio. Like I just uh, set up a new panel and. Uh, so I should be busy for a little while. So what's your uh, next thing uh, beyond that? What are your goals? Uh, really just to uh, try to get somebody to call me back for a job and uh, and uh, to keep working on this series. I want to um, uh, I want to get uh, you know a decent body to work together and just keep pushing out these pushing out for uh, shows. Okay. Yeah, so I'm, I'm hoping to get, because the, the, the Carabas Arts Council is in, uh, just out, like I said, it's just outside of Charlotte. It's in uh, Concord, and it's a, kind of a smaller town. I'd, I'd like to try to find a larger or a bigger venue that uh, can bring in a bigger audience. So. Great. Um, okay, well, great. Uh, good luck on that front. Uh, I want to thank you for your time today, and I apologize for the technical difficulties we had earlier. Um, uh, thank you for showing us your beautiful work. It's uh, fantastic, and I hope uh, it keeps evolving and to a point where you feel satisfied. And uh, um, yeah, have a great good luck in your uh, career. Thanks very much. It's good to see you again. Yeah, you too. All right, take care, David. Thank you.